A key assertion of the theory of evolution of species is that humans are descendants of apes. So can we really scientifically verify this? Let's explore. Good day everyone. Today we will look into a very important truth which is what is the origin of the humankind. Are we really descended from great apes like the theory of evolution claims? Well, today we are going to look into this key obstacle, which is that great apes and their claimed descendants like chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas, etc. all share the number of chromosomes of 48. While the human beings that are also claimed to descend from great apes have just 46 chromosomes. So how come we are descendants of apes that have a different number of chromosomes? Let's look in nature around us. You see, if you have one specific species, then all the individuals of that species will have the same number of chromosomes. So for example, the human being has 46 chromosomes, you will get a sperm with 23 chromosomes and an egg with 23 chromosomes. And when the sperm goes with the ovum, the gametes will form an embryo and you will have a fetus with 46 chromosomes, which is the summation of both. So if you look, for example, around you in nature, you will find that species that do not share the same number of chromosomes cannot mate. And if they mate by force, for example, then an embryo will not form. And in the very rare cases where this forced mating will form an embryo, like for example in the case of a donkey and a horse, well you see a donkey has 62 chromosomes and a horse has 64, and if you mate a male donkey with a female horse, you get a mule, and a mule has 63 chromosomes. But the mule will be infertile. So you cannot have mating of a mule with, with another mule. Actually, mules are always males. So there is an end of line. To get a new mule, you need to mate again another donkey with another horse. Even when you look into different species, or at least that the current taxonomy says they are different species, which is, the, for example, canines like dogs and wolves, personally, I do not see any reason why they are classified as different species, but let's say they are different species now. And both dogs and wolves have 78 chromosomes. Guess what? Regardless, they are classified, according to today's taxonomy, as two different species, they can mate and the offspring will be fertile. So it says that the consistency in the number of chromosomes is quite critical in the process of reproduction. Of course, we're talking about sexual reproduction here. So now let's close our eyes and go back in time and imagine that moment where you have a female ape and a male ape millions of years ago like the theory says and they mated both have 48 chromosomes and the offspring a freak of nature has just 46 now the theory claims that the 48 becomes 46 due to some exceptional glitch called chromosome fusion so i think this is impossible because the evidence says that it didn't happen. But now, this is the first obstacle. There is no certain advantage for, for this to happen or any specific reason that the theory says. It just says it's happened because they need to find an explanation for why the 48 became 46. But now for the 48 to become 46, you need that this fusion happens from 24 chromosomes in the male ape and 24 chromosomes in the female ape, did the fusion happen in both the male and the female? So the male had 
Now, instead of 24, 23, and the female had 24, 23, and they met by chance, and then both of them now, in their, I mean, this fusion happened in the sperm and the egg of both, and then when they met and fertilization happened, we have the 46, well, I would say this is a crazy chance to occur. And there are even much more issues and problems with that that we can make a separate episode for it. But let's say it happened, regardless how it happened. So we have now this new great ape, which is now the first human being with 46 chromosomes. Now, according to our observation, this guy now to spread the humankind will not, you know, divide into two, he will have to mate. So to mate this male 46 chromosome, first human being, there is no other 46 chromosome human beings around. The only thing that he can do is to mate with another 48 chromosome great ape. Because don't please tell me that you will count on the chance that the same anomaly that is already unjustified will happen again. Now this one will need to find the 48th chromosome ape and mate. Now we know from our observations that the mismatch in the number of genes will either cause the embryo to not form or the resulting offspring to be infertile. What is our observation? Well, I cannot ask you to bring a human being and a chimpanzee and try mating them together because it's obviously both unethical and inhumane, but alas, it already happened in the 20th century. Many experiments have happened and people had this imagination or wish for a human Z, which would be the mating of a human being and a chimpanzee, both in their view, descendants of great apes and chimpanzees happen to have great similarity to humans. At least after genetics, it is claimed that there is more than 90%, some say 95, 97, 99% genetic match in the coding areas, at least, or, or so they claim. We are going to put another episode to talk about that. But what was the result of the, exp of the experiment? No embryo formed. It failed. So we know that a human being cannot mate with his cousin, great ape descendants, as claimed by the theory. We know that this mating is not possible and it does not generate an embryo. What else do we know? We know that the human sperm cannot even penetrate the cell membrane of its ape-like cousins. So even the gametes can, cannot, cannot form an embryo. Set aside the mismatch in the number of chromosomes that is already causing an embryo not to form. So number one, we have the unjustified chromosomal fusion. And then we have the fact that 46 chromosome human beings cannot mate with great ape cousins due to the matter of the sperm and the ovum. But even if this happens, maybe it's not possible today, maybe it was possible millions and millions of years ago, then we know that the chromosomal mismatch with them, even according to our experiments and observations in this modern time, will cause the generation of no embryo. It's not possible. But let's say again that even this third one has happened. Then we expect what is the equivalent of a mule? A 46 chromosome human with a 48 chromosome ape will generate an infertile offspring. So how did this humankind spread exactly? And then we go to number five. What will this offspring look like? A horse with a donkey, 62 and 64, generated a mule that has 63 chromosomes. So do we expect the 46 and the 48 chromosomes to generate 46 chromosome human beings? Or maybe it should be a 47 chromosome something else. We also know that the number of chromosomes in its own or on its own does not provide any fitness advantage. So if 
a 47 can be generated. And we forget now that we know that human beings are 46. If a 47 and a 46 do not give any fitness advantage, then natural selection will not select against any one of them. Fixation probability, according to Haldane's formula, fixation probability equals two times fitness advantage. Fitness advantage is zero, so no fixation will happen. So how come today we do not have 46 chromosome human beings and 47 chromosome human beings? Who knows, maybe even 48 chromosome human beings. The fact is, we have consistently 46 chromosome human beings and nothing else. If you are a human being, you have to have 46 chromosomes. It is your fingerprint as a human being. So with all those five obstacles, I really need to ask the proponents of the theory, why are you consistently and persistently and adamantly propagating that human beings are descendants of apes as if it's a fact, as if it's an undisputable fact, as if you have the proof. You don't have the proof. You have more obstacles than anything. And guess what? This is not only a problem with the descendants of human beings from great apes. Because, you know, we have a very wide spectrum of number of chromosomes between different species that are on this planet until today. How did they evolve from each other? If we can apologize for Darwin, for Charles Darwin and for Wallace and for others, who were proponents of the theory of evolution of species before genetics was discovered? What is the excuse of the neo-Darwinism proponents to still continue to propagate this theory? To still, to still sell to humankind that we are the descendants of apes. So back to our original question about the very important truth about our origin. Is your father Adam or ape? I know mine is Adam. Who is yours? I leave you with this thought until we meet again. Please share this episode with those who need it. Do not forget to subscribe and click your notifications button and see you soon.